Okay, so first of all, if you're going to calculate a line of best fit in Excel normally, you select the graph and you go to add and add a trend line. Then you select the trend line and press control one and display the equation. And what Excel is doing when it calculates this line is it's looking at the vertical distances between the data points and the line of best fit. So it's looking at these distances here. And then it squares these distances to get rid of the positive and the negative numbers. And then it adds them all together. So you end up with a total number representing the differences. And then the computer tries to calculate where the line of best fit needs to be in order to get that total number to be as small as possible. And that becomes the line of best fit. However, it's not taking into account the horizontal differences between the data points and the line of best fit. So these differences here. Usually this is totally acceptable because it's assuming you know what the value in the X axis is, that it's your independent variable and you're using it to work out what the value in the Y axis is. However, this isn't always appropriate. For example, in my data set, I'm looking at the relationship between the concentrations of two compounds that were measured in the atmosphere. So I don't have an independent and a dependent variable and both of my data sets have uncertainty in them. A good way of testing the trend line is to swap the X and Y axes around, which is what I have done on this chart here. You can see it's the same data being plotted, they're just the other way around. And then comparing the gradients from the equation for the line of best fit in the two charts. So the gradient here is point 3526 and the gradient here is 0.7849 and if these trend lines are comparable then the reciprocal of one gradient should be the same as the other gradient that means I should be able to do one divided by this gradient and it will end up being the same number as this gradient here but that obviously isn't the case so it does matter when you use the normal Excel method, which variable you put on the X axis and which you put on the Y axis. Now, there are a number of different methods that look at just the vertical differences in the data points. And these are called standard least squared regression or ordinary least squared regression or partial least squared regression. But then there are also methods that look at both the vertical and the horizontal distance. And these methods are called total least squared regression or orthogonal regression or demying regression. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to calculate total least squared regression in Excel using a downloaded spreadsheet. So the next step is to download the spreadsheet. So just search online for Cantrell Linear Least Squares. And it's the second one here, Technical Note Review of Methods. And this article here contains a lot more information about the two different methods and how they give you slightly different lines of best fit. But I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom and then scroll back up again until I find the supplementary material. Now this spreadsheet is made by this guy called Cantrell, but the actual statistical method being used is the Williamson-York method but there is a link here to download a zip file, which I'm just going to click on and then download to my desktop. Then I'm going to open this file and it comes with a PDF and an Excel spreadsheet. The PDF is just like a PDF version of what the Excel spreadsheet looks like. Now this method is a version of the total least squared regression, but in this case, it's calling it the bivariant fit. It's just a different name. Now I'm going to open up the spreadsheet.
and then I need to enable editing up here and I also need to enable the macros and this is what the spreadsheet looks like and I'm going to be following the step-by-step -step instructions in this blue box here. The first step is to enable the solver add-in and this add-in automatically comes with Excel. It's just not automatically enabled because it takes up a lot of computer computing power. So go to File and Options and Add-ins and manage Excel add-ins. Then tick, make sure the solver add-in box here is ticked and OK. Once you have done that, you'll need to open and close Excel again in order to get it to kick in. But once it has kicked in, you should be able to go to the data tab and see the solver add-in here. Now, my next step is to copy and paste in my data over the top of the sample data here. So I'm going to go back to my other spreadsheet and copy this data here. And I'm going to paste it in here. Now, there are some limitations with this. You can't have any missing data. It doesn't work if there are any blank cells and also the maximum number of data pairs you can have is 5,500. And this method also takes into account the uncertainty in the measurements. So a data point that has a high amount of uncertainty in its measurement is going to have less effect on the line of best fit than a data point that has a small amount of uncertainty in its measurement. And the uncertainties in this case are these two columns here, and they are the variances. And my uncertainties are the standard deviations, so I'm going to need to fix this. And variance is just the standard deviation squared, so I'm going to take these numbers and square them. And click and drag across. Then I can copy this data and paste it into this spreadsheet. Now, there are two options for the different kinds of uncertainty that you can have. You can either have weights, which is represented by a W, or variances, which is represented by an S. And as I'm using variances, I need to change the letter here to an S. And all of the other columns here are using formulas to calculate various bits and pieces, but you don't need to change anything in them. The last thing we need to change is the initial guess here, and it needs to be the same as this number here. Now this standard M and standard B, if I copy them back into the other spreadsheet, you can see that these two numbers here are the same as the ones in the equation. So M is the slope or the gradient and B is the intercept. And it's assuming your equation is written as Y equals MX plus B. So if I go back to this spreadsheet now, I'm going to take my initial guess and just copy this number here, which is the gradient that you get if you use the standard method. And I'm copying this number manually so I don't accidentally mess up a formula or a cell reference. Now that I've done that, for the next step it doesn't matter what cell you have selected, but go to Solver. And in here it is setting the object in cell N21, which is the difference here and it's making it as close to a value of zero as possible. So it's trying to make the difference between the data points and the line of best fit as small as possible and it's doing this by changing the variable in cell M21 which is this initial guess here that we just put in and this initial guess 
the solver is going to change it slightly and then see if that makes the differences smaller or not. Then it's going to change it again and check the differences again. And it's going to do that over and over again until it thinks it's found the smallest difference possible. Now there are some options that we need to change on here. I'm going to be following the instructions in step two, and most of these should already be the default, but the time needs to be 100, and the iterations need to be 10,000. This is just to make sure that if it can't find a solution, it doesn't run endlessly, you're setting a limit for it. Then the precision needs to be 1e to the minus 30. So I'm gonna change the precision up here to minus 30. Then the convergence also needs to be 1e to the minus 30, so I'm going to change that as well. And I don't need to change anything on this tab, and I need to make sure use automatic scaling has been checked, and OK. And now I have set up my options, I can solve this. It's going to run in the background. And now it tells me that solver has found a solution and I'm gonna keep the solution that it's found and okay. And now I have a new M and B value here, a new gradient and intercept. It also calculates the error for the M value and an error for the B value and also a goodness of fit. But I'm just going to copy these two numbers here and paste them back into my other spreadsheet. Now that I have a new trend line, I want to plot it on my graph so I can compare it to the other trend line. And I'm gonna do this by creating some pretend data. So I'm gonna take a small value in the X axis, so two, three, two, and a larger value in the X axis, so two, four, five, and then I'm going to use the equation to calculate the y values. So it will be m times by x plus b. And then again, I'm going to do m times by x plus b. Then I'm going to add a new series to the chart. and the x values will be these two numbers here, and the y values will be these two numbers here. And I'm just gonna delete the lines that I drew earlier, and then select my new series and add a trend line to it. Then press Control one to open up the formatting bar, and I'm going to remove the markers as these aren't actually real data points. And I'm also going to add an equation to the trend line. And as I only had two data points, the trend line is a perfect fit to the data. And the equation that I end up with has the same numbers here as I started off with here. So you can now see that the orange line is the trend line I get, the line of best fit that I end up with if I calculate the total least squared regression and the blue line is the standard least squared regression. Now I want to test this by plotting the same thing again, but swapping around the X and Y axes. So I'm going to go back here and copy all of this and then just paste it into a blank sheet and swap around the X and Y values by selecting the whole column, holding shift and dragging it to the side. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the variances. And now I have the X and Y values swapped around. I can copy all of this and paste it back into the spreadsheet. I can't swap the columns around inside the spreadsheet because it will mess up the cell references. 
and this time the only thing I need to change is the initial guess here and I'm going to be matching it to this number here again and then go to solver and all of the options should be the same as what we selected last time and solve and it's found a solution which I'm going to accept and then I'm going to copy these numbers here back into my other spreadsheet and this is now the trend line for this graph over here and again I'm going to plot this trend line by making some fake data so the x-axis values this time a small number is going to be 83 and a larger number 94 and then I have m times by x plus b and m times by x plus b then I can add in this new series and these are the x values and the y values and ok and ok then I can add in a trend line and press control 1 to open up the formatting bar add in an equation and also remove the markers because they're not real data and then this equation is for the orange line and this equation is for the blue line so I now have two different trend lines that I can compare and the orange line is the total least squared regression and the blue line is the standard least squared regression and the reason the lines look more different in this graph than in this graph is because of the difference in the numbers that I have and the units and the axes are zoomed in to a different amount but I can now test to see if my total least squared regression lines are comparable by looking at the reciprocal of the gradients just like we did before so I'm comparing this gradient here to this gradient here and I should be able to do 1 divided by this number here and you can see it is the same as the gradient when the x and y axes are swapped round and this will also work in the other direction so you can see I get the same number here and so now I know that it doesn't matter which way round I plot the x and the y axes the numbers are still comparable when using this method okay so in this video I have shown you how to calculate total least squared regression in Excel and that is everything.